In Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for your grace. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We praise you because you are good and your mercy endures forever. We praise you because, Lord, there is no other God like you. We thank you because of your loving kindness. You've been so good to us, oh God. You showered your protection on us, your provision, your love throughout this last week, oh God. Thank you, Father, for the anniversary, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for all the things that you've done in our lives individually and as a church, oh God. We're just so grateful, oh God. We're here this Sunday morning to give you praise. We acknowledge your presence in this place this morning. We say, Lord, be lifted up, O oh God. Be lifted up in our midst, O oh God. Do a new thing today, O oh God. Let our praise, O oh God, rise up to you this morning. Thank you, Father, because you alone deserve all the glory and all our worship and praise. We thank you, Father, because as we come to your presence, we will not return the same way. We'll be full of all that you have for us. We pray for everyone who's coming to service today. We pray that they will come here safely. We pray that, Lord, that they will receive from you, O oh God, and that every heart is open and every eye is open to see and to receive all that you have for us, O oh God. We just give you the praise and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everyone say, the Lord is good. Mercy endures forever. Amen. Can we say it again? The Lord is good. The Lord, the Lord is good. And his mercy endures and forever. His mercy mercy endures forever. endures forever. Do we believe it this morning? Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands unto God. Lord, you are good. Say, Lord, you are good.
Yeah. Does anybody know that God is good? Yeah. So I want us to say it again, that you are good. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. And we're going to say that all the time. He is good. You are good all the time. All the time. If you believe it, you let me hear you good. say it this morning. You are good.
you today. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. to worship him. Oh, give him praise in the house this morning. There is no God like our God. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We exalt you because there's no God like you. You do mighty things, oh God. You do great things. You are a healer. You are a deliverer. You are a provider. You are my protector. You are my shield, my fortress, my glory, and the lifter of my head, oh God. I stand in your presence this morning. I'm amazed, oh God. I'm speechless, oh God, at your beauty. Hallelujah. I stand amazed at your presence. There is nothing you cannot do. I stand amazed, I stand amazed in your presence. There is joy, peace, and hope. There is joy, peace, and hope. Yes, there's no one like you, Jesus. There is no one, there's no one like you. No! 
cannot do. There is nothing you cannot do. Lord, I stand, I stand amazed. Stand amazed in your presence. There is joy, there is peace, there is hope. serve a God who does great and mighty things. Just begin to give him thanks. If you know he's done glorious things, if you know he's a faithful God, worship him this morning. Father, we just give you praise. We thank you, we love you, we worship you. Oh, we give you all the glory. There is no other God like our God. You are glorious, you are mighty, you are holy, you are worthy. you, O oh God. We trust in no other God but you alone. We can't live without you. We can't breathe without you. You are the very air we breathe, O oh God. This is the air I breathe. This is the
this is my daily bread. Father, you are my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word, your very word. It is spoken to me day by day. Come on, let's worship you now. Oh, we are desperate for you, Lord. Oh, we long for you. Oh, we seek your face. Oh, Lord, we honor you.
desperate for you, Lord. Oh, we worship you. We're desperate for you. And we say thank you, Lord. We just want to say thank you, Lord. We just want to say thank you, Lord. We say thank you. spectate just give him thanks Colossians 4 2 says we should devote ourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. First Chronicles chapter 16 and 34 says, Give thanks to the Lord for his good and his love endures forever. Psalm 116, verse 17 says, I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. At this time, we just want to go ahead and give God some thanks. We want to thank God for a successful anniversary. We want to thank God for a successful week. Thank God for everyone that came, the lives that was touched. Thank God for the entire program. Thank God even for this new season that we're in. Oh, Lord, we give you thanks. We give you praise. Go ahead and thank him. Oh, he says, give thanks to the Lord for his good and his love and just forever. You see, if it were not... For in the love of God, nothing would have gone well. Nothing would have gone smoothly. Not, it would have been a chaotic disaster. But God, in his infinite mercies, in his goodness and his grace, made everything possible. Let's go ahead. City Light, let's go ahead and give God thanks. Hallelujah. Oh, people came from so many places, so many parts of the world, and there were no accidents on the road. People drove. And they came here safely, no issues. There was not one single incident. Even with regards to the construction, God protected us. God protected us. Oh, let's give God some thanks and praise in the house. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Oh, what about the provision, oh God? Even when we didn't know where the, the finances would come from, you showed up in time, hallelujah, just when we needed it. Providing for every need. You met every need. You supplied every need, Lord, according to your riches in glory. Ah, Lord, we just say thank you, Lord. We want to say thank you, Lord. Oh, thanks, thanks. We give you thanks for Some thanks in the house. Thank him for your life. Thank him for your life. Come on, go ahead and give him thanks. Just open your mouth and thank him. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you thanks. Thank you for our lives. Thank you for city lights. Thank you, Lord God, for seeing us through. 
Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for seeing us throughout the month of October, now November. Thank you for seeing us throughout the anniversary. Thank you for seeing us through every issue we are facing in our lives. Lord, we give you praise. We exalt your name. Thank you, Father God. We give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 How many of us know that the grace of God is enough? Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We will multiply by the grace of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. faithfulness, O oh God of Jacob. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead me by still waters into mercy. When nothing can keep us apart. Can we take it again one more time? Great is your faithfulness. Yo 
Aleluia. Aleluia. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, we can do better than that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, that's for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We can do better. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Can you just quickly turn around to two or three people, give them a hug, tell them, welcome back. Welcome back to church. You're looking good. Well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Yes. Good to see everybody back. How's everybody doing? Good? Did you guys miss church? Yes, I missed church. <laughs> we had one week off. What a wonderful week it was. But I just want to, you know, give honor and praise to God for this time. Welcome everyone to church. Um, again, I know that God has something wonderful for you all today. And um, it's not by chance that you're here. You've made it this morning. Um, we're, still, we're still basking in the anniversary spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. You can see the, the stage is still set. I can still smell the anointing from from the anniversary. Can you guys smell the anointing? The anointing has a fragrance, you see. And uh, I can smell it. It's here. Amen. So, again, welcome to everybody. Welcome to our internet audience. This is City Light International Assembly. Um, God has called us to raise lights and, you know, people of influence in our, in our world. And you're welcome um, to our, our service today. Like we said, we had a week off and um, I believe God did some wonderful things throughout the anniversary. And we want to just take some time to, to uh, take some testimonies. The Bible says they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. You know, as you talk and as you share about what God has done in your life, it, you know, it, it propels you for victory. It, pro it, pro it provides a platform for victory. Say amen to that. And right now we're going to take some testimony. So I'm just going to give space for about three people or as the Spirit leads, but I think three or four people, to come out. If you have a testimony to share about God's goodness, especially with regards to the, the anniversary, perhaps God did something for you during the process, during the anniversary or during the conference, the GLOW conference. God spoke some words to you that transformed you. Like I personally, my life was, you know, has been transformed. My faith was stretched. Some things we're believing God for prior to the anniversary supernaturally God provided for them during the anniversary. Some things we, we wrote down on paper, my wife and I, you know, um, believing God to, to sort out to the glory of God in the cause of the anniversary, they were all taken care of supernaturally. And I just want to give God praise for that. So if you are here and the same happened to you, we just want to share a testimony. You can just come up. We have a mic. Just come up very quickly and, and share, share a testimony. So is anyone wants to share a testimony of God's going to yeah, come on out. Let's, let's encourage them as they come forward, please. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know it usually happens. One person shares and then the flood gushes. Everybody wants to share afterwards. Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, I did follow Pastor Davis' advice before um, anniversary to write down my expectations and what I was looking for. And... Um, I had a lot of questions, and I thank God. Um, one of my requests was that he talked, that God would have a word for me and talk to me directly. Well, he didn't, but I thank God because he gave me um, means to reach to hear his voice and specific instructions of what I need to do to hear his voice, and I thank God for that. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank God for direction. I mean... We've been going back, my wife and I, going back to listen to the tapes, listen to the messages online, and they've been very, very, very powerful. Is there any other person here with a testimony you want to share something? Let's encourage. Oh, I thought you were coming out for a testimony, please. Any other testimonies? I know God did stuff for us. I know. Are we shy? 
We want to testify. We need to talk about God's goodness. I shouldn't be. Go ahead. What I thank God for is that now I really know why it's very important to have a dad so you get to learn about God and when you die you go to heaven instead of hell and that that God that our dad God and everybody is always there to take care of us amen let's put our hands together hold on I want to ask you a question do you, you remember the anniversary right did you was there anything particular that stood out or any day that stood out in your mind yeah any particular day that that was wow in your mind Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, any of those days. Was there any particular day? Can you use the mic? The day was Friday. Friday. Praise God. So that was a powerful day for you. Yeah. Amen. Let's put our hands together for her. Thank you. Hallelujah. Any other testimonies? Any other testimonies? All right. Okay, come on. One last to take the last testimony. Amen. Just um, really thank God for the, you know, for the um, anniversary. It was great. I, first of all, I have to apologize. I wasn't here during the build-up. You know, I was really amazed by what I saw. Very professional work. And, you know, just so many sermons. I was able to listen, you know, over uh, at home. So on days I couldn't come here. Um, but particularly, I was, I was really fascinated with the depth at which the speaker spoke. They helped stretch my mind in particular. You know, specifically the, yeah, I think, I, I don't remember his name, is it Pastor Suni or? Um, Sino. Uh, Pastor. Exactly, Pastor Sino. You know, what he said, um, you know, really made me think a lot. And there was a specific, he didn't really talk about this, but there was something strange that started, you know, that sort of, happened to me when he was reading the scripture that the, there was a verse of scripture that struck out to me uh, that stuck out to me and that is Jesus called his disciples wicked and perverse you know and and what did the disciples do all they did was just they tried to cast out some devil they couldn't cast out the devil right and they didn't do anything wrong right I mean it's not like they were trying to extort <laughs> the you know this individual that had the demons and so I really saw myself in the position of those disciples I saw myself and and really Jesus speaking to me directly not in a not not in a um, accusatory tone he was basically saying that look you need to be better yeah. right and that's essentially what he was telling the disciples that look you have to be better. I expect more from you. Yes. I expect more from you. Yes. And, and even though this, the speaker, um, Pastor Suni, um, Chino. I'll get it someday. Even though he wasn't talking um, specifically, I, I guess he was talking about, even though he didn't stretch that, he stuck. To, uh, that's, that verse of scripture still sticks up in my, ha in my heart. I mean, um, stands out in my heart. I keep thinking about it. You know, I'm praying about it. You know, I, I don't know if you guys are praying about it or not, but um, I, it's one of the things I, I and I saw it was pervasive through all the all the um, all the um, what what all the ministers were saying. You have to go out of your comfort zone. Yeah. You have to demand, place a higher demand mm -hmm. on your life. You have to place a higher demand on your ministry. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to to have fellowship with Pastor Lan and enjoy the word. Mm -hmm. There is more. There is more. And I just kept hearing that you know i just kept hearing that through all the sermons i i wasn't able to listen to the the pastor from, from abuja when he was also talking Sam. about right. um the the holy spirit yes uh, i was listening to him this morning and again he was pretty much reinforcing the same thing you know that there is more and the way the best way to get the the more is through the holy spirit so in general i think i, I think if i apply all the principles that i've learned if i allow myself to be better through the through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, I think maybe next year there will be more results. No more kids. <laughs> more results. Praise God. Something else. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's put our hands together for Him. You know, as He was speaking, um, some things. Yes, more we'll take more testimony. But as He was speaking, 
um, some things um, just resonated in my heart regarding the entire anniversary. Um, number one was the aspect of building capacity. You know, we, we can't remain, God cannot, God will not give you what you cannot handle. You understand? God will not give you what you cannot handle. And there's a realm in our lives, a time in our lives where we have to stop being babies. That is what I got for me. Stop being babies. Grow up and build capacity so that God can give you what he wants to give you. There's something in God's hands that he wants to release to us. But he can't release it to us unless we build capacity for it. And so that really hit me and I began to ask myself, Lord, how can I build capacity for this thing? that you have entrusted in. And believe it or not, everybody here has something that God has entrusted in your hand and God wants to increase that. He wants to multiply. But the capacity has to grow. The second thing that talk, it resonated in my heart was the Holy Spirit. That you cannot do anything without Him. We have to encounter Him on a daily basis. And, and, and that, that is something that I said after the anniversary, the anniversary, I want to experience daily. Finally, you know, the scripture that that came you know you know God you know God is here do you know God is here friends God is here Jacob had a dream where angels were climbing up and coming down and he made a statement he said wow God was here and I did not know it we have to take advantage of what we've experienced so let's take I know there are more testimonies let's let's take on some more testimonies any any other testimony I need, I need people to come up and just kind of share you know what was brewing in your mind or what God was speaking to you as the anniversary as the anniversary went on. So any more? Yeah. Let's put our hands together for her. It's coming from the back. Amen. Well, the anniversary week was, it was just a blessing. It was a, a week of inspiration. It was a week of confirmation. Um, one of the biggest things that I took from the anniversary was, again, it's, it's fellowshipping with the, the Holy Spirit. It's building that relationship. Um, also, coming to, okay, coming to Chicago was something that, I knew I had to come, I had to come. I didn't know why, I didn't know what the purpose was, but something was pulling me to Chicago. And so being here now and looking at the vision of the church and this week, I mean last week during the anniversary was just a confirmation that we have to reach out to our youth. Yes. <laughs> we have to reach out to our youth. And I know that this church is the place that we're all supposed to be. And as a church, I know that we're gonna grow and just cre create a revolution in this community. And it was a confirmation for me to just keep, you know, pushing in the, in the same direction that I've been pushing and really just getting in tune with the Holy Spirit to keep guiding me every day and what steps needs to be taken also to help the church and just to help the community. So that's what I got. Praise God. That was... <laughs> Hallelujah. One more. One more. anymore all right I just want to um, say one one thing also that I got and that is you don't have a money problem it's a fit issue money is not what we need money is not the issue you know I know for me that was a, a continuous theme that I that kept repeating itself in one way or another that there is, you know, Pastor Sino said that life is more than this. You know, it says the, the Gentiles run after things. He said, they, 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 it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And it says, all other things will be what added unto you. It says, life not more than this. If God can take care of the birds of the air and the fish and all that stuff, will he not take care of you? that resonated with me that we have a father who is concerned about us and sometimes the things we are chasing after are not really the things we should be chasing after and if we can after this anniversary or take time to seek God to seek his face to be with him 
you will realize that he will take care of all the problems, all the issues that are. Money is not, money is not the problem. Relationship with God is the issue. We need to build a stronger one with him. Hallelujah. Can we just lift up our hands and let's thank God for those testimonies. I know there are a lot of testimonies. I know because, you know, um, we had some feedback, you know. I know their testimonies. But we want to thank God for the testimonies that were shared here and the testimonies that were shared in private, the testimonies that were shared, you know, in online, the testimonies that were shared, you know, from different countries, different people watched the event. We just want to thank you, Lord, for all these testimonies. We thank you for what you did, what you've done in our lives and what you did during the anniversary. Lord, we are looking forward with great expectation for more of what you're going to do in our lives. We are also looking forward to a healthy relationship with you, a life of fruitfulness, a life that is grafted in the vine. You said that, you know, that we cannot bear fruit on our own. We have to, we have to be engrafted in the vine. And that when we're engrafted in the vine, we'll be fruitful. And when we are fruitful, we will multiply. And so, Lord, I'm praying right now for a hunger for you, for everyone under the sound of my voice. Even for those that are watching and participating online, that there will be a hunger for you, a new desire to seek you, a new desire to connect with you, a new desire to hurt with the things that hurt you, a new compassion for the lost, a new compassion, Lord God, for the, the young ones, the teenagers, the youths, a new compassion, Lord, for discipleship. You said we should go into the world and, and make disciples of every nation. That this will become, Lord God, our mantra, oh God. That we will walk in it in, in its fullness, Father. Father, I pray also that as we continue to serve in this community, that your spirit will go with us, your spirit will walk with us. That there will be a healthy relationship between us and your spirit. That everyone under the sound of my voice will encounter you. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How are we doing this morning? Are we rejuvenated? Huh? Rejuvenated, excited? Come on, sound like you're excited. <laughs> yes. Ready to run in this next season that God has launched us into. Amen. It kind of felt odd staying away all week. I was almost tempted to come to church. You know, after the first day, second day, you know, like, if you've, for you to have been immersed yourself in something practically, I mean, I didn't really get involved in the everyday thing until like maybe two weeks to the anniversary and then I was here almost every day. So like going like that for about 14 days and then all of a sudden, you know, you take a break for seven days. Middle of the week, I was ready to be back for Wednesday service. <laughs> but, you know, I thank God for the concept of rest because even God, after he walked for seven days or after he walked for six days, he rested on the seventh day. And for me, it was just a time of reflection, a time of rejuvenation and um, just empowerment and, you know, a time of just receiving wisdom from God for the next phase. But I tell you, man, you know, everybody has shared their testimony, so I want to share my testimony for the anniversary. For me, for the anniversary, um, the GLOW Conference, it was a time of, of stretching. You know, it was a time where God really placed a demand on me, you know, to believe Him for things that my mind could not conceive. You know, Pastor Lan will come out and share many things that we're going to do, but just my mind could not just conceive it. But you know what? So many things that God tells us to do, our minds cannot conceive it. And what we need to do at those times is just to let our hearts grasp it. Amen. You know, the Bible says when um, the angel came to share the news with Mary about Jesus, you know, knowing that she was a virgin and all that, it was just so many things coming to her. It was just too much for her to handle. But Bible says one thing. Bible says Mary pondered those things in her heart. So you see, our heart is the receptor. Our heart is, you know, that, that, um, that tool that God has given us to be able to carry his vision to come to pass. Because it's in your heart that faith resides, like Pastor Omar was saying. You know, what we need is, you know, faith in God, the capacity to be able to 
birth and bring for those things that he has spoken to us. So for me, it was just a time of receiving the fullness of all that God has planned, you know. And I, I wrote a few things. Um, I don't know at what point I wrote it in my notes, but um, I just want to read it. As far as the things that we're just believing God for, for the GLOW Conference, you know, just in the theme of multiplying, there will be a time of, you know, multiplying of signs and wonders, multi multiplying of laborers, multiplying of skills and talents, multiplying of influence, multiplying of the Word of God, multiplying of resources and finances, multiplying of wisdom and multiplying of favor. And by all means, I want to say that to the glory of God, we saw all those things. So just give God praise. Give God praise wherever you are right now. Yeah, for what he has done. And I tell you, God has just started with us. He has just started. We have not seen anything yet. We've not seen anything yet. We've just touched the tip of the iceberg. You know, you never can remain the same when you soak yourself in God's presence, hearing the word day in, day out, day in, day out. For me, you know, it was just a time of receiving wisdom. I would say if I was going to summarize my whole experience of the GLOW Conference, it was receiving wisdom, wisdom to move forward in every area of my life, wisdom for finances, wisdom for birthing those things that God has put in our hearts, wisdom um, for the children, uh, raising them up, you know, in a godly manner, you know, wisdom for ministry, wisdom for impact, wisdom for influence, wisdom for my relationship with God. So I got so much wisdom. You know, and the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord. When we take time to pursue God, when we take time to spend time in His presence, you can't but not receive wisdom from God. So that's what I received. I received wisdom just for every area of my life. And um, I'm running on that wisdom right now. I know it's going to carry me far. Amen. So I just want to encourage everyone. I know we all took notes from the different speakers. Many of us were going back to hear the messages um, from the anniversary. You see, it's in the doing of the word that you experience the blessing, not just in the hearing. The hearing is the first step. But then you have to take it up to the point where, you know, the hearing of it, you get so full of it that it, it makes you, you know, it just gives you the capacity to do it because it's in the doing of it that you experience the blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Even the children were so impacted. I must say that Pearl, throughout this week, she was just looking for anything that looked like a microphone. You know, yesterday she had this, um, the, you know, those mixers that you plug into like the hand mixer. She had two of them. You know, they look like a microphone when you turn it all the way. So she's like, yeah, testimony. I got to give my testimony. You know, she was going to everybody, testimony. And then she'll, she'll say, praise the Lord, hallelujah. You know, I could just see the impact of being in God's presence eight days in a row on our children. You know, I was sharing with um, Sheila last night that I was just so ministered to when I saw her daughter worshiping God. You know, worshiping God. I mean, you could just see that there was a mighty hand of God upon her. And for our children that are here, God has started a new thing in their lives. Children, do you believe that God has started a new thing in your lives? Amen. They are our future. And I know that a seed has been deposited in their lives, which will bring forth a great harvest. If you believe that, say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very exciting times. So we're just going to go right now and give our offerings and our tithes to God. I want to encourage us very quickly from the Word. So if you just turn with me to the book of Galatians. Let's go to chapter 6. All right, so I'm going to start reading from verse 1. Galatians 6 and verse 1. 
says, brethren, if any man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work. And then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. Verse 6. Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Verse 7. Do not be de deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that will he also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of his flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Verse 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Let's read verse 9 together. Again, say so let's, let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, we will reap if we do not lose heart. Amen. You see, there's a grace of giving and there's a grace of receiving. There's a grace of sowing and there's a grace of receiving amen receiving the harvest that grace has been made available to us as believers that grace has been made available and what is grace grace is just god's ability upon your life his supernatural ability upon your life to do above what you can do in your own capacity that's the grace of god amen you see whenever we come together or whenever you know in our normal normal everyday lives there's always something coming out of your uh, our lives it could be a word it could be an act it could be a thought um the bible says we should not grow weary we should not grow weary in our act of doing good don't grow weary in your act of releasing things in your life that do good things that bless your neighbor, things that benefit the people around you. Why? Because you see, in that same grace of releasing, in that same grace of doing good, in that same grace of sowing, there's a grace of receiving. Amen. When you do good, when you release good in your life, good comes back to you in multiplied form. You see, it's not just in the area of our finances. Our finances is just one of it. But God has blessed us so much with good things. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from God. When we look around our lives, He has blessed us with so much good. Someone say, there's so much good in my life. You see, and that good is not just meant for you. It's meant to be experienced by everyone around you. Amen. So the Bible encourages us not to grow weary while doing good, while releasing good, while releasing good words, while praying for somebody, while visiting someone, while picking up the phone call to encourage someone who is weary, while encouraging your neighbor, while sowing your skills to the benefit of others, while using your gifts and talents to glorify God. Don't grow weary in doing that. For there is a grace there's a grace that is released while you're doing it to also experience good come back to your life amen hallelujah so it says in due season we will reap if we faint not so i just want you to think about that as you get your offerings ready to give to god today don't grow weary in it because there is a reward there is um a grace that is released even as you give if you don't lose heart tell your neighbor don't lose heart don't lose heart amen hallelujah so are we ready this morning with our tithes and our offerings and we're just going to pray over it right now if you just want to 
lift it up or you know as a, as a sign of faith I want to read this um, confession at the back of the envelope so you just read it after me say Heavenly Father we profess this day unto you that we have come into the inheritance which you swore to give to us we are in the land which you have provided for us in Christ Jesus the kingdom of the Almighty God we were sinners serving Satan but we called upon the name of Jesus and you heard our cry and you delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of your dear son Jesus as our Lord and high priest we bring the first fruits of our income to you that we may worship the Lord our God with them father we rejoice in all the good which you have given to us and our households we have heard your voice and we have done according to all that you have commanded us now father as you look down from your holy habitation from heaven to bless us as you said in your word we believe that we receive those blessings according to your word this is our confession of faith in Jesus name amen hallelujah praise God hallelujah. praise God can we all just rise up and praise God one more time hallelujah the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever
Hallelujah. Amen. Let's lift our hands, everyone. And know with everything you've got, I want you to say a very big thank you to God. Just say thank you. I, you know, just thank him for, for his faithfulness in your life, for what he's done for us as a church. Let's thank him. Let's appreciate him. We praise your name, Lord. We thank you. You are good. And your mercy endures forever. Be glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. Let's put our hands together for them. Hallelujah. Good to see everyone <clears throat> again. How was the one week break? Did you guys enjoy it? Now, for some of you, it, you know, it's not really, <laughs> it's not really strange because we take the breaks. <laughs> but for some people, uh, like myself, that one week was so rejuvenating to me because for the past two months, if I could take it to three months, two months, I took a trip in between to Nigeria for about five days. Came back, but even in Nigeria, I was here. <laughs> for the past two months, I've been in church constantly. Missed. There are so many things that I had missed. And uh, I tried to catch up <laughs> this last week. First of all, I had the opportunity to focus on myself. Just myself alone. Amen. <laughs> you know, it's good to focus on yourself. So, first of all, my phone was off. Well, not off, it was on, but I wasn't picking up calls. Except, you know, a few. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, I, ca I caught up on all the, you know, I love science fiction a lot. So, I had missed a lot of, there's a show I love so much. Those of you that like science, it's called Falling Skies. Who knows Falling Skies here? Yeah. All right. So I watched season one, season two, season <laughs> Season three, I completed everything. <laughs> Congratulate me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then I picked up on Primeval. I'm going to be no Primeval here. Those guys don't follow science fiction. So I picked up that. I've started with season one. Amen. So I did that just. And then I, I was just watching the, you know, I was watching the science fiction and I was watching the word. I was listening to, first of all, I listened to the, uh, this, the conference. Just watched all of them. And then I picked up messages I was watching Dr. Young Cho. I was watching uh, Bishop David Oedepo. I was just feeding myself. Man, I felt so refreshed. Amen. <laughs> so refreshed. Catching up time, time with the kids. I had missed their parents' teacher stuff for last week. I told them to postpone it, that I will, I will come. So I, had, I was able to go to that, catch up on how they are doing at school catch up with my wife. Man, so I'm ready. Hallelujah. <laughs> so the, the week was very productive. I, just like my wife was saying, I was tempted to come to church one day, but when I left here on Sunday, I vowed to myself, I said, I will not enter that church until Sunday. <laughs> so I turned off everything. We turned off the water, turned off everything. Say, I will not get into that church for one week. And I thank God I did not come into this place. Somebody shout hallelujah for me. <laughs> you don't know what a miracle it was for me not to come into the church. <laughs> I pushed it aside. Amen. I, I thank God for refreshing. But, you know, before I go into what I want to start sharing, let me just take some time to, um, I want to appreciate, you know, we have appreciate God, but God uses people. I really want to appreciate Every one of you. Hallelujah. I want to appreciate. You know, if you read scripture sometimes, uh, for example, Malachi chapter 1, verse 1, 
If you turn to Malachi 1 verse 1, you will, and you will see it many times in the Old Testament prophets. They will come out. For example, Malachi chapter 1 verse 1, it said the burden, everybody say the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. Everybody say burden. Now, in my own work with God, I've discovered that when God gives you something, a vision or a word, when he speaks to you, there's something that comes with it. <laughs> Amen. There's a burden that what? <laughs> that comes with it. And if you don't know how to handle it, you can let it, you can let that burden get you down. Amen. Say the burden of the word of the Lord. Jeremiah also uses the same thing, the burden of the word of the Lord. Why? Because, you see, many times when God speaks to you to do something, one of the ways you know God is speaking to you is that what he tells you to do is an impossibility for you in your natural strength. That's one of the ways you know when God is speaking to you. When it's something that you can easily do, it might be pizza speaking to you. You know, you might, I mean, but when God speaks to you, he stretches you. Now, God has spoken since before the year began that we should have the one week of the anniversary. And, you know, we put it in the, um, if you check the calendar for the church from the beginning of the year, we put it in there. We put the first weekend of, the first week of November and everything. So it wasn't like something that was sprung on us. It was, it had been there. But the enormity of the task really dawned on me when we had, um, you know, I think about three months ago or so when we had the handcuff meeting and we're discussing on, okay, now let's execute this. First of all, whoa. And of course, you know, I, I was praying to God, okay, well, you know, one way, what are we going to do? Then all the speakers started coming. <laughs> okay, so we're going to bring all these people to Chicago. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's a big thing. That's a big thing. Number one, all those people that you saw coming here, like I told you before, they don't just go anywhere. They don't just go anywhere. And many of them, because they are in high demand, they are very, you know, they, they choose. They only go either by relationship or God spoke to them, you know, to be there. But God says, you know, reach out to them. So we reached out to them. And they all said yes. For example, Pastor Sino was supposed to be in Brazil. In fact, when I told him that he should come for the conference for about two weeks, he told me, please, let me get back to you. So we're communicating on Facebook. Let me get back to you. Okay, I'll get back to you on Thursday. So on Thursday, he will send me, you know, Pastor Lam, let me get back to you on Saturday. So I was trying, I was trying to find out what was going on unknown to me, and, you know, eventually he told me, he was supposed, he had already committed to a meeting in Brazil, so he had to cancel it to be here, and immediately on, fr on Wednesday, he was in, he had gone to Nigeria to preach, and, you know, in other words, he finished there on Sunday, and then by Wednesday, he was back, he was in Nigeria to speak. So, he, you know, he took, I mean, it was God. God wanted them all to be here. God wanted them to be here. So that was one part. Then the second part was, okay, how are we going to do this? And, you know, the building thing, where things were. I knew that if we had the anniversary, the way things were, we'll probably be, <laughs> we'll be hosting people <laughs> in this church bus. Amen. <laughs> or maybe I'll have to use my house or something. The, I just, we just, I, but you know, God just gave me that vision that you can get this thing to this point. But it was a, it was a, it was a burden. When the word came, it was a burden. It was a burden. How are we going to do that? How are we going to get it to that, to that point? I remember, you remember the, the day I told you when we still had all these things behind the stage. So I took him, I said, I told him, I said, by the anniversary, <laughs> by the anniversary, we're going to have the stage constructed. We're going to get, you know, get the green room constructed. He, he looked at me, he said, by the anniversary? I said, I said, yes. 
But we started by taking a single step and listen. That is how it works when it comes to faith. Don't, when God gives you a vision, don't look at how big it is. Just start by taking what? Whatever step is in front of you that you can do. That's it. Start with what you can do at that time. The only thing we could do at that time was clear the mess that we had. Amen. That was all. Just start. When you are done with that, the next thing will come, the next thing will come, the next thing will come, and the next thing will come. That's how to walk by faith with God. You don't try to complete everything from the beginning. You start by doing what you can do. You start by doing what you can do. Wow, so it was huge. But, you know, why I'm saying this is because I need you guys to know. Everybody look at me. I need you guys to know. That word burden, I need you to know that, and it will, I know you all are familiar with burdens. Many of you have leadership positions. Many of you, God has spoken to you about things you need to do. You know what a burden, I don't know if you know, you know what a burden is, right? It's a, you know, it's something that is on you. You know that God, quote and unquote, is depending on you. Amen. To get it done. You know, many times we talk about dependence on God, right? Now, God is the one that's still going to do it, but he still needs a human person that can believe. Amen. He needs a human person that he can speak to, that can walk and activate and move and stay there and get it done. So, in some ways, while we are depending on God, right, to get it done, God is also depending on what? I'm going to be say, say after me, say it is two ways. Say we are depending on God. And God is what? You know, for example, look at Joshua chapter 1. Look at Joshua chapter 1. Let's see whether, you know, what I'm saying is scriptural. Let's look at it. Joshua chapter 1. Moses, my, you know, the word of the Lord came or something, something to Joshua. Joshua 1, let's look at it. The death, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun. Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I've given you, as I said to Moses. Now, let's see. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Etites and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory. Okay, so that's the vision. Now look at it. Uh, verse 5. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I'll be with you. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to these people, everybody, what's the next word? You. I say you. For to these people, you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give. In other words, it's not me that will divide the land. You are going to do it. Be strong and of good courage. Verse 7. Verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn to it from the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. Be strong and courageous, because I'm going to, you are going to be doing something, so it, it could be intimidating to you, but just be strong. I'm going to be with you, but I'm depending on you to do something. I want you guys to know, and I can show you scriptures, when he met Gideon, just as we depend on God, God also depends on us. Everybody say God depends on us. It is a partnership. It's a partnership. The vision, for example, right now, God spoke to us during this anniversary about the children in this community. He is depending on us. You know, that was, he loves the children. He loves the youth. But he's depending on us to do it. Amen. He's depending on us to do it. He's the so I want you guys to know that there is some responsibility, some burden that we take when it comes to, you know, following God. God wants responsible people. So when God gives the vision, there is a responsibility you have. Amen. There is a responsibility you have. There is, he has his own responsibilities. Amen. But I also have what? My responsibility. So I knew that I had a responsibility. Amen. To get it done. If I slept, if I shirked it, if I just continue doing other things, if I don't 
cut, do things, it will not get done. I knew it. Amen. If I don't do my part to lead it, it will not have gotten done. Do you get what I'm saying? It will not have gotten done. It will just have been there. It will not have gotten done because God, expect, God needs us to get things done on the earth. God needs us to get things done on the earth. Okay, so it was a burden. Everybody say a burden. It was a burden. So after the anchor meeting, <laughs> and we shared about the anniversary, and you know, I looked at, I, you know, I, I do write a lot and try to plan ahead, and I saw all that it was going to take. I knew that, man, this is going to be a tough deal. So I called, I was speaking to my friend, Dala, I said, you know what, God just spoke to me that we should do a one-week meeting. Say, in the history of the church, we have never done a one-week meeting. And he said, bring all these people and then and all that. I said, I'm going to go on a 21-day fast. (laughs) said, I'm going to go on a 21-day fast. That was more long before the anniversary, maybe about three months or so before the anniversary. I'm going to go on a 21-day fast and I'm just going to ask God for help. He said, I will join you. And then... I talked to Pastor Lumide. Pastor Lumide said, I will join you. By the way, Pastor Lumide is preaching at a church today. So, you know, we're going to pray for him. There's a pastor that, you know, traveled and couldn't make it to his church. So, he had invited him to come and speak to his people there. So, we'll pray for him before, you know, I preach my, my real message. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so he said, I'm going to do it. So, I talked to other I said, okay, okay. You know, I talked to my wife. I said, I'll do some part of it. And so, so, we started the fast that was the beginning. And then, getting closer, getting closer to it, a lot of, of course, God gave a plan during that time of, you know, what could be accomplished and all that. So we started. Now, this is where I am going. Everybody look at me. Hallelujah. When God gives a vision, usually he does not give it to everybody. Did you get that? Everybody say not to everybody. That's why we have leadership. And that's why there's something called followership. Everybody say leadership and followership. You see, the first thing you've got to do in any church, and I'm going to make this announcement because, you know, I will talk. first thing you've got to do in terms of the church you want to attend if you are going to attend any church, make sure you are in tune with the leader. Everybody say amen. The moment you lose your respect for the leaders, the moment you can't listen to them, leave. If I pray, you know, I'm, I pray constantly. I say, God, anybody who is in this church, whose heart is no longer flowing with this church, or who cannot flow with the leadership of this church, Lord, please just move them or let them know. Let them move them to a place where they can follow the leaders. Because you won't be blessed anymore. And we won't be blessed because of your presence. We won't be blessed. So I pray that prayer constantly. I say, God, please, anyone who, who is not getting blessed or who cannot flow or who just, God, please move them to a place where they can flow and be blessed. Hallelujah. And I know God answers that prayer. So, amen. I know he does it. Amen. Hallelujah. Because it is important. The way the kingdom of God works is God puts his people under leadership. That's why shepherds, that's why God anointed shepherds. That's why God calls people to be shepherds. Sheep follow shepherds. Everybody say sheep follow shepherds. Not blindly, in a sense, as they are following the great shepherd. So, in other words, you buy into leadership, you believe in the leadership, and then you follow. Amen. Come on, say you follow. Even when you don't understand, you don't, it does, it's not totally clear to you. Just because you know this is where I'm supposed to be, this is what, you know, this is my leader, just because he says, do it, you say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, let's go, amen. That's how it works. So, you see, you see it all through scriptures. God didn't call the whole of Israel and say, hey, all of Israel, I want to speak to you right now. You shall possess the land. No, he said he called what? Joshua. And you see it all through scriptures. Amen. God will call leader because there must be leadership. I say there must be leadership. When Jesus wanted to speak New Testament, he wanted to speak to the churches in Revelation. And he had some important words for them about things they needed to, contra- to, to correct and all that. 
and you know he said to the angel he told he told he told john he said to the angel of the church of these right he did not even say right to the entire church. He said to the angel, the angel of the church. He wasn't talking about the word angel is from the Greek word. It's a Greek word that means messenger. So he was writing. He wasn't writing. An angel, an angel was not appearing to John to write a letter to an angel. I mean, that's stupid. Amen. Angel appeared and said, write to an angel. No. The word is to the messenger. Everybody said to the messenger. The word is angelos. In what messenger? To the messenger of the church. In other words, to the pastor of the church in Laodicea. Right. To the pastor of the church in Theatra. Right. To the pastors are angels of the church. They are messengers of what? Of the church. So he said, right. And tell them this. And then let them pass it across to the church. Amen. God leads you individually in God's calling. You don't need to hear about God's plan for your life from me. You don't need to hear about who you are going to marry from me. You don't need to hear about the kind of business you want to do from me. You don't need to hear that from me. God can use me to confirm it, but he speaks to you primarily. But when it comes to the church, God will never speak to you about this church without first speaking to me. It's, it's, it's not. It is not. That's not the way it works. It won't go, God will not put it just like, you know, I put somebody in charge of uh, something. And then I now go under, right? You know what it's called? Micromanaging. You now go under. You now, I now start talking to somebody underneath. And, say, uh, and then the person now tells, that's stupidity. God doesn't work that way. So many people make a mistake. They think God is going to speak to them about the, about the church and he has not spoken to the pastor. Anytime you hear such a thing and say God is speaking, no, first of all, if God speaks to you, you go and meet the pastor. And if he says, Yeah, you know what? You are confirming something that God has been speaking to me. That's the boy. If he says, Thank you. Amen. Just go and be praying. Amen. You know, I told God, I said, when he was telling me to go and pastor, I said, if there's anything that's going to concern this church or whatever, I said, you have the responsibility to speak to me about it and every, and all that. I said, I don't want any secret or anything. I don't want anything to just come out. And that's the way it has always happened is that either I will know supernaturally, I will know naturally anything that's going to affect the church in any way because it's a covenant that I have with God. Amen. Hallelujah. So God, that's the way God works. He speaks to leadership. We all need to learn to follow. Everybody say we need to learn to follow. Now there's participatory leadership. Where you, the leader, a good leader must allow people to bring the ideas. But in the, in the final analysis... You, everybody can bring the ideas and while you are praying, God can say, all those ideas is nothing. This is what I want you to do. So it's at that point that everybody learns to say, yes, Lord. Everybody say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So now when the word has been released and the burden is there, now there is something called burden bearing. Everybody say, burden bearing. Everybody say after me, say, burden bearing. There are different people in the church. There are burden bearers. In any church, there are those who bear burdens. There are those who have burdens. No, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm saying this seriously. There are those who bear burdens. There are those who have burdens. And there are those who cause burdens. You know, it's one thing for you to be a burden, right? It's another thing for you to what? <laughs> to multiply burdens. And there are those who do what? Who bear burdens. There are those who bear burdens. Question you ask yourself is that, am I one? Am I a burden bearer? Am I a burden? How am I a burden? <laughs> what? Corsa, whatever you want to call it. You identify yourself. Amen. Let's look quickly at Numbers 11. Numbers chapter 11. Numbers 11. Numbers 11. That is, I mean, it's not strange to see that it's every church in the Acts of the Apostles. They were there. There was Ananias and Sapphira. It was a burden. You know, there were I mean, all kinds of people, and there are those who bear burdens. Amen. Numbers 11. There are those who cause burdens. There are those who bear burdens, and those who are burdens. Numbers 11, um, verse 1. Well, let me not read verse 1. It's a whole long story. But really, so many things had happened. Okay, let, let's read the verse 1. It said, the people complained. It displeased the Lord, for the Lord heard it. And his anger was aroused. So the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some of them in the outskirts of the camp. The people cried to Moses. 
And when Moses prayed to the Lord, the fire was quenched. So he called the name of the place Tabera because the fire of the Lord had burned among them. Now the mixed multitude, who were, everybody say mixed multitude. I'm just trying to tell you, that's how churches are. We're mixed. It was a mixed. There are all kinds of people. It's part of the deal. Amen. It's part of the deal. The, the mixed multitude were among them yielded to intense craving. So the children of Israel also wept again and said, who will give us meat to eat? We remember the fish which we, are, which we ate freely in Egypt. The, co- the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, the garlic. For all the food that they are measuring, they are, they are vegetables. I don't even know. <laughs> they are food that some of us don't want to eat. <laughs> but our, now our whole bean is dried up. There is nothing to eat except this manna before our eyes. Now look, these people didn't remember that when they were in Egypt, they were slaves. Carrying blocks, right? It's only the cucumber and all that that they were remembering. Now, the manna was like coriander seed and it's color like the color of delium. The people went about and gathered it, ground it on millstone, beat it into mortar, cooked it in pans and made cakes of it. And its taste was like the taste of pastry prepared with holly. Let's look, go very fast. Let's go very, very, very fast. And when the dew fell on the camp in the night, the manna fell on it. The people heard the people weeping throughout their families, everyone at the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was greatly aroused. Moses also was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, what? And this is, see, this is, the burden is now getting to Moses. Why have you afflicted your servant? Why have I not found favor in your sight? That you have laid the burden of all these people on, on me. Did I conceive the, all these people? Did I beget them? That I should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a guardian carries a nursing child to the land which is what? To their fathers? Can you imagine? They were thinking of going to Egypt. But Moses was thinking of carrying them to the promised land. But they were thinking of the cucumbers of Egypt. Moses was thinking of what? Of the promised land. Amen. They were looking at the past. He was looking at the future. Where am I to get meat of all these people? For they weep all over me, saying, give us meat that we may eat. I'm not able to bear all these people alone because the burden is too heavy for me. Everybody say, the burden is too heavy for me. Man, sometimes, thank God, you know, two things. And I'm going to share, share it with you. Sometimes, if you don't know two things, if God has told you to do anything, call you to do it. If you don't know these two things I'm going to be sharing, the burden can be too heavy for you. If you think about the finances, all the things that it takes, whoo, you can be so depressed that you can't do anything. But God, look at what God told him. He said, oh, the body is too heavy for me. If you treat me like this, please kill me here now. If I found favor in your sight, and do not, do not let me see my wretchedness. Do not let me see my wretchedness. This is a man of God talking. Verse 16. Oh. Uh, Next verse. Where am I to get? No, verse, 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 uh, let's, 16. Or the next verse, whichever. Is stuck? Are we stuck? Numbers 11. Verse 14, right? 16. Then the Lord said to Moses, this is where I'm going. Then the Lord said to Moses, the Lord said, gather for me 70 men. Everybody say 70 men. Of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them to the tent of meeting, and let them take their stand. Everybody say, take their stand. They're with you. And I will come down and I will talk with you there. And I will take some of the spirit that is on you. And I will put it on them. And what will happen? If you are following in your Bible, what will happen? And they will do what? And they shall bear the burden of the people with you. So that you may not bear it yourselves alone. So what was God's solution? God says, you know what I'm going to do? Out of the entire congregation, I'm going to speak to some people. I'm going to move upon their hearts and they will come. 
they will stand with you and I'll take part of this spirit, this thing, and they will bear the burden with you. You know, that's what we saw. That's what we saw in preparation for this, um, you know, for this uh, conference that we just did and the, the project we're working on. Uh, God just began to move upon the heart of different people, many of you in this place. And people will call me, they will come, come forward, and people started taking on different responsibilities. People walk to me in secret and they will say, Pastor Land, this is $1,000. Don't talk to anybody about it. You know, of course, I have to, I say, I have to talk to finance. I don't handle cash. Amen. I don't handle cash. Says, don't, don't make any announcement. Don't talk to anybody. This is $1,000. That's for the flop. You know, some, you know, just different people bringing different things. People waking up early in the morning. People staying overnight and just bearing the burden. By the time it was Sunday, you know, the night that, you know, some people stayed overnight during this stage, I was just looking at everything. I was looking at people building things and doing things. And I was just thanking God. I was thanking God for, you know, for those people. Thanking God for, you know, speaking to their heart. I was thanking for those who were giving. Even people from outside, you know, past members of the church. Just different. God was just moving upon the hearts of people. I would just call Pastor almost sometimes. I say, Pastor, come on, look at this quick pay. Somebody just sent this from this place. Somebody just, you know, people were sacrificing. Some people were maxing out their credit cards. People were just doing different things because we had a goal that needed to be accomplished. Now, I'm not going to mention or call any name. I'm not going to call any name or mention, but I want to sincerely appreciate every one of you. Let's rise up on our feet and let's just appreciate, let's appreciate everyone. Those who, those who are watching online, those who are here right now, I want to appreciate you all. I want to appreciate you all. Let's put our hands together. Let's, I want to appreciate you. God, you know, the burden you were bearing was the burden of the Lord. Amen. It was the burden of the Lord. And the same God, the same God that you served, the same God. You know, that you, you know, that made the call and you responded. That same God will bear all your burdens. I decree, lift up your hands, everyone. I decree in the name of Jesus that for every one of you that sweated, stayed overnight, gave, did, prayed, sacrificed, turned things over. City praise members had to rehearse 40 songs. To be here every day. Some of them were walking. People carrying drywall and just doing different things. I pray to God. God. If God has called me, if God sent us to do this work, I ask that that same God will supply all your need. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And before the end of this year, each and every one of you, you will see a miracle. Amen. A miracle that God has performed concerning your greatest need. Amen. Whatever stands before you right now as a need, as a burden, I decree by the same God who has sent me that that God will remove those burdens. Every one of you trusting God for a house, you will find your house supernaturally. Everyone trusting God for a job. God will give you a job supernaturally. More than a job, he will give you work and destiny and purpose. Everyone trusting for marital settlement. God will, rest God will settle you. Everyone trusting for healing. God will heal you. Everyone, you know, trusting God for their callings, their ministries. God will fulfill it. I decree in the name of Jesus that you will see the effect, the, hand, the mighty hand of God in your life. In the name of Jesus. And I declare that every hour that you have invested, every amount that you have invested, everything that you have invested, every ounce of strength that you have invested will be, re will be re multiplied back to you a hundredfold in the name of Jesus. I decree it right now. It is done in Jesus' name. Come on, let's give praise to God. I appreciate God. Thank you, Lord. You may please be seated. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We pray for Pastor Lumide as he's ministering.
you know, God, let your grace and your presence be upon him to be a blessing to the body in Jesus' name. Amen. I need to see some people after service. Check your emails. I've already emailed you. Um, if I had your email, those of you that I don't have your emails, I'll talk to you immediately after I finish this preaching. But for those of you, I need to see you because we still have some work to do. Hallelujah. So I was praying and said, so what do we do now moving forward? You know, first of all, God wants us to act on every word that we have heard. Everything that was spoken during the anniversary and the, conf the entire conference. Everything that was spoken, God wants us to practice it. So Sunday, you know, we had a powerful word about increasing our capacity. We had a powerful word about, you know, shining as light. Let your light shine. Everybody say, let your light shine. So that was just, you know, giving us a summary of the whole thing. You know what? Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. And then on, on Monday, Dr. Fuda was here, and he talked about God's compassion, God's justice, and how God has put us in this community, in this city, to be, to be, to be his expression of justice and compassion. And he gave us practical ideas of how we can do it as a church. So we're going to be working on that. Amen. We're going to be working. And then on Tuesday, we had a powerful time on relationships. Everybody say relationships. So we're going to be working on our relationships. Husbands, wives, singles. We're going to be working on that. We're going to be trusting God, you know, for strong, solid relationships. Hallelujah. We're going to be working on those things that were spoken to us. Strengthening our families. Strengthening our families. Strengthening our relationships. And then on Tuesday, he spoke to us about the Holy Spirit. Everybody say the Holy Spirit. On Wednesday, I mean the Holy Spirit. About following the Holy Spirit. About the power of God. So as a church, you know, as we you know, move on by next Sunday, so we'll be announcing some steps we're going to be taking in terms of corporately allowing the Holy Spirit to flow. And then what we can do you know, individually to, you know, to allow the Holy Spirit to lead and to flow and to take us into the next level. And then on Thursday, Pastor Dallas spoke. Oh, man, that, that was one of the most powerful of those. How many of you will agree with me? If you missed it, go listen to it about finances. And he spoke about practical things you can do for finances, about savings, about investment. He talked about, what was the acronym that he used again? Do you remember? About earning, keep, what? What? Harm. Hey, harm, right? So A stands for acquiring. Everybody say acquiring. In other words, we all got to acquire money. Everybody say after me, say we got to acquire money. I can't hear everybody say, say we need to acquire some money. So whatever is going to take you to acquire it, you don't steal it, amen. <laughs> but however, amen. If you say, I mean, however, business, job, we are going to get deep into it, amen. Whatever, deliver pizza, start a business, and I'm going to be leading it, amen. Hallelujah, I'm already plotting, amen, on acquiring on businesses in this area. Amen. My wife is on fire. Oh, yes. You should see my wife now. She's an international businesswoman. <laughs> my wife told me yesterday, say, I'm flying to Nigeria. I said, what? <laughs> say, She's going to launch a business. Are you flying? Okay. All right. Amen. You know, she's doing some things now. A lot of, you know, things are happening. So, I would say acquiring. So we're going to spend time to work on that business, you know, whatever it is, job. We need to make some more money. Everybody say we need to make some more money. Then the second one, hire, is what? Retain. Everybody say retain. Everybody say retain. So in other words, as you, it's not how much money you make that matters. It is how much you retain. It's how much you retain that matters. So, meaning every one of us, we want to, and I'm already praying and saying, God, how can I help these people do this? One of the things God has blessed me with is creating systems. Amen. Creating systems. I'm thinking of what system can I, how can I help people to be able to retain more? What can I do that can help them? You know, so we're going to be unveiling some of those systems so that, you know, each and every one of us can retain. I'm going to say retain. And then the last one is multiply. Everybody say multiply. 
multiply. So you earn it or you acquire it, you retain it, and then you multiply. That's investment. Investment. And we're going to get into that in this year, coming year. We're going to get into that. I already told you. We've got to buy the properties around this area. How many of you are going to join me? Are you ready? Okay, girl. I'm not joking. You know when I say something, I don't joke. We're going to do it. It's going to be done. Don't say, ah, Pastor, I don't have the money. Don't worry. The anointing is going to be there. Amen. By the end of next year, you too, you will be a property owner. Amen. You'll be a property owner. We will, what, we will do it. You know, not just property that you live in, but property that you rent out. Or property that you sell. Amen. Believing, we're going to do that for a fresh anointing for that. And then on Friday, Pastor Louis came and preached. And he spoke about many things, but the, the, the summary of it was, we are here to reach the, God is depending upon us to reach the younger generation in this place. The youth, the children. And he made a statement, he said, if this church does not reach the children in this area, in five years' time, the church will still remain the same. God forbid, amen. So one of the meetings I'm having after this service is with some people who are interested in that. So if you are interested, if I didn't send an email to you because I have not been able to judge your interest, maybe we don't have that much relationship flowing, and I'm not able to judge your interest very well, if I didn't send that email to you, but you are, if you are interested in a fresh, a fresh thing to be done for the children and the youth in this community, see me in the green room at the back here immediately after the service. Hallelujah! See me in the green room, because I want to share some things. We're going to start with one project, I got a, a call from Pastor Louis, um, you know, a day after I preached, and he told me, he said, you know, he said, you know what, I can help you guys, you know, relaunch your, your kids ministry in the community. So what I can do is, you know, his, his daughter, uh, Mad Madison, Maddie Ray, if you put her in YouTube, you see her, she has a show on TV that a lot of kids watch. So he said, you know what, I can bring my daughter and some of our kids, people, they can come here and organize a Christmas program with you, for you guys that you can invite kids in the community, you know, one of the evenings, and he said, you can use that to kick things off. And I, I don't know if you think that's a very great idea. So we're going to plan towards it, and then we're going to use that as the launch, and then we're going to start taking it from there, from going forward from there. Hallelujah. Amen. Hel hallelujah. So we're going to do that. Someone say we're going to do that. Don't be, you know, all, all you adults and all that. Don't start, you know, don't, don't, I don't want to hear any call. I don't, say, I don't know, Pastor Lan has not called me in a long time. Because we're going to be focusing on the children and the youth. Everybody say amen. amen. I need you to focus with me. Amen. Just like we're saying, you know, the next one, the next message was building your capacity. Everybody say building capacity. Let's rise up from being babies and becoming matured. Paul told the Hebrews, he said, when you ought to be teachers, he said, you still have somebody to be teaching you. You still need somebody to be teaching you. In other words, let's all rise up. Let's stop all this thing of, hey, you know, you know church, uh, somebody has not called me. Let's stop all that. It is people who complain about that. There are people who are not investing in other people. The greatest, listen, your, let me tell you about the Christian life. If you don't know, if you don't know, and I've been a Christian for over 20 years right now, and I've seen different seasons of life, and I've worked with so many people, young people, older people. You know what I've seen? I've seen something. When the Christian life is most enjoyable, when you are investing in other people. The Christian life becomes exciting when you are teaching what you have been taught. When you are multiplying yourself in other people. That's what keeps you going. I think that's one of the things that keeps me going as a person. I can never survive just lying down, me and my wife, we kiss each other, and then we kiss each other, you know, and then we watch TV together, then we go out to the movies. And I can do that for one week, but after one week, I say, baby, <laughs> got some work to do. I'm, she can't even do it. My wife is even more active than I am. Amen. I mean, I mean what kind of a life is that? What kind of a life is that? Me, myself, my dog, and my two children. God forbid. That's not city light. That's not city light. That's not city light. City light people, they enjoy their family. Amen. Come see me playing with my kids. Come, come see me watching movies with them. Come see us when we do our devotionals at home. Amen. Joe, you know you. 
Come see us when we do it. Come see us when we enjoy ourselves. But when we finish enjoying ourselves, when it's time to walk, it's time to walk. I say bye-bye. Amen. Say bye-bye. That's not what life is about. The Christian life becomes exciting when you are investing. You see, in the, in the Christian, in the work of God, when you give out, you grow. Everybody say you grow. That's how the anointing works. When you give out, you grow. When you just take and take and take and take, you become, you become constipated, quashokod, you fat. And baby, you become a baby. And Satan will come. He said, what to them that are at ease in Zion? He talked about, you know, he, said, he said, rise up, you lion. You are a lion, rise up. Because, you see, when a lion, as strong as a lion is, when a lion is on the, you know, he's just there lying down. Even the, what do you call it? The, you know, the smallest animal will come and touch it. And the lion says, oh. And then before you know it, they will call all of them. They will start dancing around it. <laughs> start dancing around it. But let the lion rise up. And roar. <laughs> Everybody starts to what? To scatter. Some Christians are like sleeping lions. They do their quiet time. Five, five minutes. And then they go out. Which, which is the latest movie you have now? And then they... And then they talk, 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 talk. And then they continue the same routine. How can you live that way? How can you live that way? Life is about contribution. Everybody say life is about contribution. Life is about contribution. Amen. It's about contribution. So I want to stir you up city light. Let's leave this realm of babyhood. Let's leave this realm of, let's begin to look out for others. Amen. Yeah. Let's begin to look out for others. Let's begin, let's give all. And you see, either water it shall be what? One thing I've noticed is that as I continue to water people, mentor people, do whatever, I have never lacked watering. God connects me to all kinds of people. Amen. God opens, if I say, God, I need you to open this door. I need to know this person. God opens it up and I get to meet that person and they point to me. Stop all those kind of babyish kind of thing. Single people, don't make getting a woman or getting a man the focus of your life. That's not the focus of your life. That's not the focus of the season. You don't get man or woman that way. You, you get it by losing yourself in God. Amen. That's how it works. You lose yourself in God. You seek his kingdom. And all these things are added to you besides. Married people too. How do you preserve your future? Don't preserve your future by cutting, you know, putting, say God, we would only allow God to go up to this level. We don't want to become fanatics like Pastor Lamb. You know, you know Pastor Lamb is a pastor. You know, we are not pastors. So let's not... <laughs> Let's be very careful. You know. So, what you don't know is that Pastor Lana has been a fanatic before he became a pastor. And who knows what God has in store for you? So, if you hold back because you don't want to be pastor, you might hold back from your destiny. Wives push your husband to go for God because when a man finds God, that's when he can look at you with the right eyes. Push him to go for God. Push your wives to go for God. You, you see, man, what a. I'm telling you, all the fight that when husband and wife are fighting, uh, one of the reasons why we're, you know, when all those, why all those fights happen is because both parties or one of the, they're not focusing on God. You see, when when you are playing, when each, when you are playing on the tune of God, and the other person is playing on the tune of God, there is harmony. And you get to, that's the key. You find out where, where God is playing, then you start playing. Then the other person start playing. Then there is what there's harmony. But if one of you are looking at each other, when you play poo poo, the other person say papa poo poo. Papa. <laughs> but if you look to God and play what God is playing, take your eyes off your husband, take your eyes off your wife, just focus on God and be playing what God is playing, playing what God is playing, then before you know it, there will be harmony and resonance. You go for God. That's what makes a happy marriage. 
That's what makes a fulfilled life. Go for God. Stop letting your husband push you or your wife push you toward God. And then you say, ah, I don't think. Oh man, stop giving your wife body. Oh man. You know, we'll get into all that later. Hallelujah. So, in conclusion, I was a conclusion. The theme for this month, and I'm going to run it all through till um, the end of this year, is finishing strong. Everybody right? say finishing strong. We're about to run it up this year. Finishing strong. The kingdom culture of completion. Of completing things. Finishing strong. Everybody say finishing strong. And our text is this. Finishing strong. Our text is going to be 1 Timothy. Actually, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4. I want you to rise up as we read it, everyone. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Finishing strong. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse You see, we have to get the kids their, <laughs> their place. Amen. So that's why the building project continues this week. Amen. We have planned the project to be completed this year. I've already sent out the project plan. We're going to complete it. Amen. I was a finishing strong. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. Verse 7. Everybody, let's read together. One, two, let's go. I have what? Verse 8. Uh huh. Finally, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also unto you. Second Timothy was the last epistle written by Paul. It was an epistle written by an aged Paul who was about to go, and he was writing to his spiritual son. And Paul said, I have finished. Everybody say, I have finished. Everybody say it again. Say, I have finished. You see, I was studying the Bible on this, and I'm going to be sharing more this month on this. I've disc- I just discovered that, wow, there's so many scriptures about finishing in the Bible. Starting from Genesis to Revelation. And I also saw that God does not reward half-finished work. <laughs> no. He does not reward our finished work. He rewards, he rewards what? Completed work. Now, God can allow you to rest. You just rest, rest while you're working. But I discovered that it's when people finish that God now, God now shows up. Amen. I will show you some of those scriptures from next week. God now shows up and says, okay, now let's do this when it's finished. I also saw something that to finish, to finish ultimately strong your life, To finish ultimately, like Paul was talking about here, you have to learn to finish little, little things in phases. Did you get that? To be able to finish your ultimate purpose on the earth, you don't wait until the ultimate purpose. You finish little, little things. You finish seasons. You finish this one that is telling you to do. Then you move to the next one. Then you move to the next one. And then you look back and say, wow, at the end of your life, I finished. In other words, it's face by face. So we're going to be looking into all that in scriptures. Because many of you right now, you have some uncompleted projects. You have projects you've started. You have things that God has showed you, visions and different things he's told you. And then you you get to the middle, and then you go to the next one, and then you go to the next one. And then, no, there's no reward for that. Jesus said, no man intending to build a tower will not force sit down and count the cost, lest he is unable to finish it. And people start laughing. In other words, when you don't finish, the devil laughs at you. It's a shame to start things and not finish. 
They said when they finished the gate, when Nehemiah finished the gate, they said when the enemy heard, they were depressed. When you finish task that God gives to you, you depress the enemy. Satan was depressed when we finished that anniversary. Like, oh, oh man. This. I want to depress the enemy until I leave this world. Everybody say after me, say, I want to depress him. That's why I finish. I'm going to say I finish. I want you all to shout, and that's your confession for this month. Say, I'm a finisher. No, I didn't hear everybody shout. Say, I am a finisher. Say it again. Say, I am a finisher. Finishing requires a fight. Like Paul said, I fought. Finishing requires keeping something. I kept, but I finished. And when you finish, there's a crown. Nobody get, have you seen in the Olympic before somebody stopped in the midway and they gave him the medal? I say, we, we just want to appreciate you for preparation. You know, we learned about preparation, right? In the past month. We want to appreciate you for preparing because we saw you the way you were sweating and preparing. And then you came, you dressed so well and you started so well, but you did not finish. We'll give you the gold medal. Have you ever heard that before? He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. It is those who get to the end. Don't start things and not finish them. Man, I've been tempted so much. You know, I'm doing my, my PhD is so is a burden. Amen. Especially where I'm right now. I finished almost all the courses. I think I have two more courses. I had to cancel one, you know, because of the anniversary. I missed the first week and they removed me. <laughs> <laughs> from it so but now I'm the end the dissertation throughout this week I was just looking at that dissertation <laughs> at the research I'm like oh my god what kind of temptation is this but you know that I know I, you know I use PhD candidates PhD C in front amen so you see my email PhD with a C okay but Amara <laughs> you are PhD right it's PhD candidate equal to PhD. It's not the same. Man. <laughs> In other words, I have another six to eight months ah, of grueling work. But it is when I finish that they will say PhD. Not if I stop along the way. That is how it is in every area of life too. There are many dropout Christians, but there are no dropouts in this place. Someone say, we finish. Say after me, say, I will finish the assignments God has given me. I will finish what he's told me to do. Say, I'll finish that school. Say, say I'll finish that school. I'll finish laying the foundation of that business. I will complete that relationship. In other words, anything you get involved in is either God speaks to you and says, stop. When God says stop, then it is finished. Amen. Or you finish it. God does not reward. No, I didn't build the hack halfway. <laughs> he will have perished with what? With the rest of the people. So lift up your hands. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. As we move into this month, I pray for everyone here, those who are watching online, every member of City Light, wherever they are right now. Lord, I pray. I thank you, Lord, for that anointing. The Bible says you are the author, you are the finisher of our faith. When you were on the cross, you said it is finished. You came and you finished. And then you sat down at the right hand of God when you finished. Lord, the Bible says you finished in the beginning and then you rested. Lord, I pray for that same anointing to finish to come upon every member of this church young and old. Thank you, Lord, because for everything that you have given to them right now, they will see it to the end. They will not fall along the way. They will not die along the way. And this year, we decree, as we get into the latter days of this year, as we move into the last days of this year, Father, we thank you for supernatural speed. We thank you for supernatural strength to complete the things that you have in store for us in destiny for this year and the people said yeah. and the people shouted yeah. in the name of Jesus for those of you visiting us for the very first time in 
church we would like to recognize you you know and just say hello to you you know we have a gift for you i would like to meet you thank god we have a reception place right now i would like to meet with you briefly um you know after this service so if you do not mind for everyone there is food my mom is not in church because she's making snacks for everyone i think it, it should be arriving and drinks just to celebrate what god has done after this service god bless you have a wonderful week i see you on wednesday amen